Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review we are reviewing my white whale which is in the form of a black panther. This is the Beast Wars Ravage figure. It is highly sought after by many Beast Wars collectors, myself included. I've waited years to find one and I finally got one and I'm super excited about it. This is what the packaging looks like. Uh, this part here just folds back. It's a side flap. Very similar to the Tamashii Nations type of packaging. So that's it. It's known as the X9 Ravage. I can't read any of this crap other than, other than Beast Wars medals. Uh, and, and really the story on this guy is he was in Beast Wars, for, Beast Wars for a very short amount of time. They did not release him in America at all. He was only released in Japan in this line of figures. So that's why he is hard to come by and highly sought after. And he's really a badass character. Um... So it's just pretty cool to finally have him. You guys know I'm a big Beast Wars fan. He does come with a sticker sheet, which is not too uncommon for the Japanese figures. You do get a large uh, Decepticon logo there. And you get two small ones and two small uh, Predacon logos. You also get the Megatron head. And the reason you get those, at least those two big ones, is that you can replace this one on here. And by replace, I mean cover up the one on his chest there. You can replace that with either the large Decepticon logo, or if I can pick it up, with either one of these. You can replace that center one with either one of these. Of course, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and then you get these two little ones of each variety, and those go right here underneath that joint hole, so you can put the uh, Decepticon or Predacon logo on him. So that's pretty cool. I do like that. The chest does close up nicely, so that's appreciated and he is very very similar they reused most of the transmetal cheetor mold uh, very very heavily reused cheetor right here but luckily they did replace the head which is perfect uh, it's not a hundred percent show accurate but it looks really cool and the mouth does open and close so that's kind of nice uh, the robot mode is really nice uh, pretty much the same thing as cheetor he's got ball pegs for the shoulders he does have, which is a little bit different to Cheetor, if I remember correctly, the elbows. I don't think Cheetor had this, but this guy has a swivel in the bicep and in the forearm. So he has the hinge here, and then they swivel on either side of the hinge. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the head has no articulation other than this, which is part of the transformation. Of course, that works for just making the head look up. So that's okay. Uh, he doesn't have any head swivel, which would have been really nice to get some good posing out of him, but he doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, we do have a waist twist. It's really stiff on mine, but he does have a waist twist, so that's good. Hips are ball pegs, so pretty good range of motion there. We have a knee hinge here, almost 90. And then technically we have this reverse knee hinge, but that's really just for beast mode. And then we have the ankle hinge, and then the heel is also a separate piece. So pretty decent articulation, pretty good Transformer figure, especially for when it came out. I mean, these are old figures, and it's holding up really well. Uh, one cool feature about him, uh, actually before we get to that, he does have the tail that comes out, obviously just like Cheetor. I don't remember if his tail went away in robot mode or not. Uh, I don't believe he actually used it as a weapon like Cheetor did, if we can focus on that. Uh, so you can just take the tail out if you want to, but the cool thing is he has dual pistols, which he did use in the show, and those are connected right here on his hips, and they're permanently on the bottom side of his hand. So all you have to do uh, is push, which direction is it? One of the directions, I don't know. You push in one of the directions and his guns fold out of each hand, which is kind of cool, John Woo style. And then you can just peg these in. I don't remember too much if he uh, actually had something similar to that, like out of his hips, kind of like Robocop in the show or not. It's been forever since I've seen it, uh, seen those episodes anyway. And then he's got his dual pistols, which is pretty cool, I think, because he's kind of a badass, like really badass in the show. So that's pretty awesome that he's got his dual pistols and... It's just a really good robot mode. I'm really happy with it. The co composition is pretty good. It's not 100% accurate to the show, uh, but it still looks pretty darn good. And I definitely recommend you pick this guy up if you can. He stands just about 6 inches tall to the top of his ears. Of course, you can pose him a little bit differently, but I have him about as straight up and down as I can get him. So about 6 inches tall. Pretty good size for this type of figure. Uh, but definitely pick him up 
for the robot mode. Really, really awesome figure. I couldn't be happier to have it. So let me go ahead and get him transformed and we'll look at that. Okay, so we have Ravage in his alt mode or his beast mode. And it is very similar, obviously, to Cheetor. Uh, the main difference really is just that he has his arms tucked under his chest, which makes for a really horrible transformation, to be completely honest. They're just arms hanging under his chest. Uh, you can fold them up a little bit, you know, move them around to see how you like it. But there's really just no good way to hide them. Uh, he does still have the uh, jets that Cheetor has, but uh, he didn't. I don't believe he ever used those in the uh, in the show. So it would have been nice if they had actually just removed that function and used that big hollow cavity to hide the arms. That would have been much better. These still come out just like on Cheetor. So yeah, it would have been cool if they figured out a better way to hide the arms, because they don't hide very well at all. So that detracts a lot from uh, the cat mode. It's not as horrible as I thought it was going to be. Once you kind of pose him, they don't stand out as much unless you look directly from the front. If you look from the side, maybe it's worse on camera. In real life, anyway, without bright lights on it, they kind of disappear since they're mostly black. It's obviously still not very good. The mouth does still open, so that's cool. Shoulder swivels, elbow hinge, wrist hinge, same leg articulation as robot mode. And then, of course, the tail still pops out and does that just like Cheetor. Uh, if you're curious, he's about 5 inches to the back of his hip and including the tail about 7 and a half. Uh, one thing I need to note on this guy, other than the fact that he has this really cool black chrome paint job, uh, the shoulders, when you swing these around for beast mode, these two hinges here that are a little bit different than Cheetor's, they don't actually fit between the arms, so it's kind of forcing it, and I wouldn't recommend you do it personally. Uh, beast mode, what's the point? You might as well keep them in robot mode anyway, and with the risk of these hinges breaking, and just the overall not very appealing figure, I'm going to have to say the beast mode's not very good, and I definitely recommend uh, leaving him in robot mode which is reasonable anyway just about for any transformer but so uh, so there it is it's not a great uh, beast mode but it's a great figure overall and definitely one that you probably should have if you're a big beast wars fan uh, like i said it's one of my grail figures so i'm super happy to have it and uh, that does it guys so i do recommend the figure if you can find it good luck if you're hunting uh, best of luck to you again so thanks for watching guys stay tuned for more figure reviews custom figures and other good stuff and in the meantime Keep collecting.